What is up everybody? I hope you're all doing well. Today we are checking out the Hampstead Soundworks Zenith Amplitude Controller. This is a really great uh, tone sculpting tool in a stomp box. It's got really high grade components. It's basically a really nice transparent uh, compressor limiter on one side and then on the other side it's uh, a really nice uh, dialable three band EQ. Um, now, what's really great too is you can choose between running the comp into the EQ or the EQ into the comp or the two sections uh, in parallel. So let's get right into uh, the controls on the top. So on the top left, you've got your uh, compression control. It does what you think it does. It's the amount of compression. Now your attack is uh, set. It's a very fast attack, but it works really well, especially for guitar players that don't want to mess around with all that stuff. I found it to be really intuitive. The blend control in the center is blending uh, the comp with the dry signal. Now, if you're using the EQ, then you're gonna be blending the EQ uh, with the, uh, the comp, and we'll, we'll get into that in the demo, but that's what the blend control does. Your level control uh, is only for the EQ, and we'll get into how that works. It works when the EQ is on, and it also works in parallel but it's bypassed if you're only using the comp. Right below that are your bass, mid, and treble controls. They are detented in the center. In other words, that's when they're flat on the potentiometers. Uh, each control is capable of boosting or cutting uh, 15 dB, um, which is great uh, for tone sculpting, but also for pushing your amp. We'll get into how that sounds. Right below that, for your mid control, you have uh, three different mid frequencies, 500, 800, and 1.2K, um, all very musical frequencies for guitar. Right next to that, you can actually choose the bandwidth of those frequencies. Uh, so you've got three bandwidths from uh, kind of a broad uh, band or bell to a little bit narrow uh, to a really sharp bandwidth all the way to uh, the right. We'll get into how that sounds. Now this foot switch uh, is a, a soft uh, foot switch and it's called uh, OptiKick. And I'm not sure what the design is, but it feels great and it's super quiet, works really well. Now I need to do a little bit of explaining with this foot switch. There's a few ways to run this pedal um, that can be actually um, programmed. Now this pedal is completely analog, but as far as how you set it up to switch, between comp and EQ with just the one switch is uh, the digital part and it's really well thought out. Now, the way I'm gonna demo it to you guys is in what's called cycle mode. In other words, I can cycle between the comp, the EQ, and off. And that's, that's how I'll show it to you guys. But there's a standard way to, to use it. So when you hit the switch, uh, both comp and EQ will come on. You can set it up to actually flip-flop between the two. You can set it up so it comes on with the comp on and you can add EQ to it. You can set it up the other way where it comes on with the EQ, but you can add comp uh, to the EQ. And then on top of that, there's a control uh, jack uh, that you can use as well to further control the, uh, the comp and EQ on and off. So they've pretty much covered uh, all the bases there while still retaining uh, just one uh, foot switch. And I won't go into how to do that. You can, you can read the manual, but, but that's a really uh, well thought out feature. Um, power wise, you can run it at nine, 12 or 18. I'm gonna go ahead and just run it at nine uh, for this demo. If you look at the, uh, the front of the pedal, not the top, but the front, you can see you've got your uh, in and out uh, jacks, and then there's that parallel switch, uh, or I should say routing switch that I spoke about. So you can have uh, one way is comp into EQ. If you put it in the center, that's parallel. And then if you put it all the way to the right, that's EQ into comp. We'll get into how that sounds. Of course, there's your, uh, your DC input. Without further ado, let's get into how this thing sounds. Okay, let's get into some sounds. I'm gonna use my uh, Red Plate uh, Blues Machine amp. Um, it's basically kind of a Fender Deluxe type thing. Here's the guitar just into the amp. Now I'm going to turn on just the compressor.
Now the way I've got it set up right now is with the blend control all the way up so we're hearing uh, mainly the, the comp section. And I've got the, the compressor uh, ratio essentially turned up about past uh, noon, so it's, it's fairly squishy. It feels squishy, but it's not so much audible as much as it is a feel thing. Now if I shut it off, and then here's on. So you can hear it ramp back up. Now there is a uh, internal gain control inside this. So I could gun it a little bit so that I have a little bit more level, but I, I kind of like where it's set right now. Now we can obviously go um, more subtle, so. That's much more subtle. It feels, it's still got a little bit of compression there, but it, and it does still clean up the amp a little bit, but it's, it's more of a subtle comp. So there's all kinds of ways you can dial it. I mean, I, I liked it kind of more, a little more uh, aggressive in the way it, it feels. So that's the comp side. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, EQ side really quick, and then I'll add the comp to it so you guys can get an idea of what's going on. So now the level control won't work until you have the EQ engaged. So now it's no compression. The EQ is on. I've got the level set so that basically it's not really boosting at all. Now in a clean setting, what I did uh, when I got up the sounds for the uh, that track, the uh, is I used uh, the EQ to add, especially top end, and the treble is really sweet on this. And then I basically left uh, the middle and bass alone. We'll get into those a little bit later, but when I turn the compressor back on, We shut it off. And then we can make it a little more subtle. We can add, uh, or actually, let's go ahead and take out some 1.2K. We can choose between two, uh, or I should say three different bandwidths. I'll leave it on the, uh, the more just kind of broad bell shape. So that's flat. We want to take it out a little bit and have it be a little bit more kind of scooped in that upper mid. That sounds really cool. Without it. We could go the other way and fatten it up, maybe go to 800s and leave it, let's go to the center. Get it uh, on the other side of that bandwidth, it'll be a little bit less honky. Now because there's 15 dB of boost, when you start boosting mids, it's gonna break up the amp a little bit. So we can compensate by turning the overall level down a bit. Maybe use a little more compression. Now it's breaking up less, but we've got that kind of 800 bump. So there's all kinds of things we can do within the EQ. Now, one thing I do want to show you is uh, the parallel setting. Right now, you're hearing the compressor into the EQ. If I put the switch in the center, it's going to go into uh, uh, parallel. And what we can do with that is pick kind of which frequencies we want to uh, to actually, uh, you know, 
be bumped because what's going to happen is the compressor is going to compress kind of the upper mids and highs, but we could create uh, a little bit more low end um, when it's in uh, parallel. So the low end itself isn't going to be uh, compressed. So, uh, so check it out. So since we're in parallel, I can actually turn the level off now because we're not running in series. So we're hearing the comp, but even though that level's off for the EQ, Now what I can do if I want to bring in some lows to that, I can start rolling them in. And they're much more immediate because they're not compressed. So that's a really, really nice feature. And of course you can do that with the mids and the, uh, and the treble as well. But I thought that was a really cool idea. Now, if you go the other way, as a matter of fact, I'll, uh, I'm just gonna level all this back out and I'll uh, explain the, uh, or let you hear how it sounds to have the compressor into the EQ as opposed to the EQ into the compressor. But I also wanna show you within that idea how to use this more as a, a boost box uh, for your amp. And, and it's basically how I got that kind of Jeff Becky uh, kind of solo sound. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and let's just listen to the comp really quick. Okay, I think that comp's gonna work for this. Now we'll turn on the uh, the EQ, and what I want to do actually, instead of making it so it's more unity, I'm going to actually boost the the level of the EQ. So now we're going to be uh, driving the amp a little bit harder. Maybe about right there. And with a humbucker, it'll break up more. But if I go to a neck position. It's just a really nice push. Now here's where that EQ can come into play again. So let's say I wanna add like a fatter mid and some more overdrive. I can go ahead and set my frequency at 800. Let's go for the broader bandwidth and we'll see how that sounds. Now I've just added a little bit of bark. Maybe there's a little too much top end, so I'll turn the treble down just a little bit. Add just a little bit of lows. And that's how I was getting that sound. And then all I did was uh, add some uh, like plate reverb. And I liked it because when I used fingers, it was really expressive, but when I dug in, it had a really nice bark to it. Now if I shut all this off, and then add it all back in, So it's not just a compressor, you know, like your clean compression that adds a little bit of EQ. It really allows you to sculpt tones and also uh, overdrive the input to your amp. Now, back to what I was uh, originally talking about. Right now, you're hearing uh, compression into EQ. So basically, your EQ is going to be more open. Now, what I'm going to do is switch it to the other side where it's EQ into compression. What's happening is, you know, say the other way was a little too bright. Well, in this case, you can uh, actually via, now that you're sending EQ into the compression, you can actually soften up the, uh, 
the, the top end because it's actually being compressed. Whereas if we go the other way, now it's a little more open. And you know, we could, if we go back to uh, EQ into compression, and it's compressing a little too much, we can back it off so that it lets, you know, a little bit more of that top end through without completely compressing. But you all ha also have to keep in mind, if you boost the level, that's going to be into the compressor, which will cause it to squish down a little more. So it's a little bit of a balancing act. But it's a really nice feature. I personally like it better uh, on the, uh, with basically compressor into EQ, or yes, compressor into EQ. But we can also do, set everything in parallel. And that sounds really cool. And we could make it, uh, you know, more of, we could go for more of a kind of a rock thing, maybe move it to 1.2K boost. And it's still pretty uh, expressive. So this really is uh, a tone kind of shaping machine as far as how you can dial it. I hope I haven't confused you guys. Um, one thing to keep in mind is you're obviously seeing me scroll through settings to turn this off and on, and that's because I have it set up that way so I could just stagger through things to show you guys what's going on. This can obviously be programmed, and I mentioned it before, but for demo purposes, I just wanted to be able to show you guys one thing at a time and then uh, both uh, together. So. Uh, that's how that was working. So that is the uh, the Zenith Amplitude Controller. I really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in, and we will see you next time.